Undercover Carson, Secret Agent. Operation Death Ray, an assignment in Rio. However you may judge French-Italian dancer Faye Carelli, in the end, she's not the type of woman easily dismissed from the mind. Perhaps that's why I've gone a little ahead of myself in relating what led me to find the grim evidence that this death ray was indeed a real thing. Two days after I accepted this assignment from the British intelligence, I landed by constellation at Rio's Galeo Field. But no cloak and dagger stuff for me. I've always made a point of being limelighted and so disarming the critics. Thus, word was sent ahead, the reporters were waiting, and the newspapers duly published stories about the arrival of Senor Bruce Carson. He was a high executive of a British meat importing firm, an ardent bird watcher, and enthusiastic collector of ancient weapons and novelty pipes. I read these accounts in the palatial Copacabana apartment of Sir Giles Davenport, a long-time resident in these parts, and also a keen bird watcher, in more ways than one. Yes, um, uh, yes, Carsten. Uh, I, I get the point. With all that guff about you and those photographs, no one would suspect you of being here on an undercover assignment. As I said, Sir Giles, I found it pays off to be conspicuous. Yes, well, it's, it's your neck, old fella. But what the blazes is that? Uh, that thing you are sucking in this photograph? Hmm? Oh, a pipe. Yes, I, I guess that. But man, it, 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 it's almost a weapon. Well, actually, Sir Giles, that's precisely what it is. A weapon? So. Uh, let me show it to you. I, I see. Uh, how, how many of these things do you carry around? Oh, I brought two dozen odd with me. Generally have five or six on my person. <laughs> Remarkable. A Moorish pipe, eh? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I thought I recognized the style of the inlay. You can uh, unscrew the bottom of the bowl. Eh? Yeah, like so. Oh. Uh, amazing. And here, you see, capsules. Capsules? Uh, uh, what for? Oh, handy, no? Might want to send someone off to bye-bye in a hurry. Oh, you, you mean uh, sleeping drops? Well, uh, knockout drops. Oh. Now, uh, this other pipe, for instance, is from Afghanistan. <laughs> it could have caused a holy war by the look of it. Very handy in a war, Sir Giles. False stem here, fitted with spring mechanism and a very useful steel arrow. Then put it away, man. Put it away before anything happens. <laughs> I, I thought you didn't go in for the cloak and dagger stuff. Well, not in the accepted sense of the word. Well, anyway, down to brass tacks. By Jove, yes, yes. I feel on much safer ground, much safer. You know now why I'm here. Yes, yes. To track down the six scientists. It's some task, old fella. A big place, this. Brazil alone, larger than the USA. They must be located before any other power gets at them. If there is such a thing as a death ray, and if between them these six scientists can piece it together, our people must have it first. Oh, absolutely. It's a scratch start, Sir Giles. But we believe the German pilot who flew out these scientists in '45 can at least provide the names. Well, I should imagine so. The even where they've nipped off to. Mm, that's what I'm hoping. Well, what about the pilot's name? Carl Schmidt. Uh, Carl Schmidt? <laughs> you understand what you mean. Bad as Bill Jones. <laughs> exactly. Must be scores of Carl Schmidt's in Rio alone. Uh, any other details? Uh, plumage, uh, habits, and so on? Plumage, blonde. Habits, nocturnal. Nocturnal? A led a gay life. Soulmate of mine, perhaps. Oh, <laughs> yes, uh, I see. Married a Brazilian fashion model, but... Uh, when his money petered out, she dumped him. Ah, oh, these women, you know. Yeah, we're told now that he's more or less destitute. May not be in Rio itself. Hmm. Quite a number of fellows like that roaming about these parts, Carson. So I'm informed. However, that's enough for me to start with. Yeah, I'll contact you. If I can get a line on him and his, uh, his um, nesting habits, you know, then I'll give you a string of places to watch. Sir Giles contacted me next day. He had a sizable string of night spots where our bird was accustomed to roost. It was at the black macaw that I made my first contact and lost him. It was at the same spot that I met Faye Carelli and found her left on my hands. Oh, 
Monsieur Carson. You will excuse me for being so upset, but I am not accustomed to murder. <laughs> Understood, my dear. Another drop of champagne? Well, seeing that I do not have to appear again tonight at the cabaret, we. Oui. Fine. When I dance, I never drink. Oh, other way around with me. <laughs> but uh, here's looking at you. Here is uh, what? Uh, good luck. Oh, oui, uh, good luck. Monsieur Garçon... Uh, Bruce, if you don't mind. Well, Monsieur Bruce, why would anyone want to throw a knife and kill that poor aged man behind the bar? Who knows? He was so harmless and so very old. Age brings wisdom, they say. Perhaps he knew too much. He knew too much? About what? Uh, look here, how about me asking some questions for a change? Of course. What made you come running into the Black Macaw tonight? I was being pursued by a horrible man in what you call loud dress. You saw him for yourself. True enough. No doubt he saw me dancing at El Rocco and, uh, well, uh, I often have the same trouble. Well, imagine that. Uh, then you understand? Just wondering. But uh, why pick on the black macaw? Because it is close to El Rocco. Oh, of course. And because I think the men on the music stand who are in the same business will protect me, then I... Uh, I see you. Fate. Uh, perhaps it was. Anyway, when am I going to see you dance? Uh, tomorrow night. If you will come. <laughs> Try keeping me away. Well, now let's toss this off. I'll see you home. It wasn't until an hour later, when I was heading back to my apartment in a taxi with a suicidal Brazilian driver at the wheel, that I began to think seriously about the night. That old bartender had hinted he could help me trace the German pilot. Ten minutes later, he was dead. That knife was meant for me, perhaps. Well, my turn was to come. The next night, I booked a table at El Rocco. Faye Corelli danced. And how she danced. As her act came to an end, I became aware of a different type of beauty alongside me. Cool, aloof, blue-eyed, flaxen-haired. Mr. Bruce Carson. The same. You will excuse me approaching you in this manner, but I recognized you by the pipe. Uh, oh, yes, uh, Tyrolese. Most becoming. <laughs> Quite harmless, actually. But uh, do sit down. Thank you. It will only be for a moment. Bright spot. A little too bright. Drink? No, if you don't mind. This is a matter of business. Business? Oh, nothing to do with your interest in the beef and the mutton, Mr. Carson. It is in relation to your private interests. My, uh, private interests? The collecting of arms and ancient weapons. Oh. <laughs> I conduct a shop for antiques in Rua de Ovidor. Oh, I know the street well. Here is my card with the address. Thanks. I have been approached by a party to handle, on their behalf, the sale of a rare crossbow. That a fact, eh? Of 16th century Spanish origin. Well, uh, I'd like to look it over. You'll be there in the morning. I don't see why not. Would 11 o'clock suit you? Um, perfectly. 11 o'clock, then. Now I will leave you, Mr. Carson. I see that someone is coming to join you. Goodbye for the present. Uh, many thanks, Miss, um, uh, Faye. A divine performance. Now I'm utterly struck on you. Who was that? Oh, uh, the blonde? Oui. Well, um, oh, let's see the card. Helena. 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 Old wares and the address. That's all it says. I do not like her. No? She is pale and cold. Perhaps. She's not warm like me. What does she want? Uh, she's got a crossbow she thinks I might be interested in buying. And are you? Most. I'm looking it over in the morning. Meanwhile... Let's have a toast to that superb dancing of yours. Mr. Carson, you are late a little. Oh, it's this Rio traffic. Wide streets, drivers all madmen. I'm sorry, Miss... The uh, crossbow you will find in this large box. Oh, what's it doing in that, for heaven's sake? It was delivered to me as you see it by the party in question. Odd? When one deals in antiques, Mr. Carson, nothing is odd. Hmm... Possibly not. I left the opening to you. Why? 
It is more the task for a man, surely. Very well. What are you doing? Turning the box on its side. But would it not be easier to open it? I or? prefer the safer. Now, let's see. Hmm. Mr. Carson, would you be good enough to explain? You'll soon get your explanation if you don't already know. Now, get behind me. I beg your pardon. If you have any sense, you'll... Fine, that's the idea. Out of harm's way. I do not understand what this is all about. Watch. First, we undo this clasp. So. Now, to raise the lid. Gently. Gently. Oh, you fool! That vase is shattered. Better a vase than my chest. Or don't you think so, Miss Helena? What is all this? Look on the wall behind the vase. An arrow, quivering still. <gasps> and that arrow was obviously arranged for yours truly. I'd say a quick explanation would be the order of the day. So there it is. In a few days, I'd met two women and almost my own end. This blonde Helena had an explanation to make, all right. But it was more obvious than ever that I had some pretty ruthless competition in Operation Death Ray. Mm -hmm.